mother uh, who saw that coming. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to go to a concert that would charge my mother more than my father. That seems fucking retarded and pulled out of it. Now, Eventbrite is trying to put pressure on them, saying, well, you can't use our service to sell your tickets if you're going to illegally charge people money based on their skin color. And they've kind of got they've gone quiet. They're not out there anymore yelling at people and telling them uh, what they have been telling them for the past week or so that you don't understand your privilege and that you need to pay more money, Whitey. Watching the reaction to this was real fascinating, especially in the comment section of any thread that was discussing it uh, on any social media platform, really. Lots of discussion about equity being more important than equality. I haven't really seen this discussion play itself out to this degree until this stupid fucking event. But lots of blue check marks appearing out of nowhere, especially on Twitter, to remind people that there was this thing called slavery, I guess. I don't know. I've never heard of it before. But as they've told me, black people used to pick cotton. And so somehow that translates into charging white people $10 more to listen to shitty music in Detroit at midnight on August 3rd. And when people said, hey, this kind of sounds like racism, they said, no, it's equity. Oh, black people have suffered so much you don't understand. And the only way to make it right is to charge you $10 more at the shitty Detroit Music Festival. You stupid white motherfucker. I, I, you know, I'm trying to imagine the inverse of this. I'm trying to imagine like a country music festival, like headlining, I don't know, fucking Garth Brooks, or I, I, that's about the only name in country music I can really think of. <laughs> I don't know much about country music, but whatever. Fucking Garth Brooks pulls himself out of the grave digs himself out of his own fucking career coffin and heads up a country music festival and then they charge black people $20 and charge whitey 10 there'd be fucking riots in the street I don't think you could say I don't know how you'd swing it as an equity argument maybe you could <laughs> you had a bunch of Latinos in the comments too saying what about us Asians what about us what, what's our rate where do we fall are we black are we minority <laughs> are we paying white rates here how does that fucking work? Uh, POC tickets, oh, persons of color tickets, of course, were sold out. So you had to buy, you had to buy the whitey tickets. Now, I've noticed that after Eventbrite warned them and said, hey, what you're doing is illegal and we're going to pull your fucking event off our hub and not sell your tickets, that all of a sudden, all these split price tickets disappeared. They didn't get pulled down, they were sold out. So it seems like that's their way of trying to get around this. They're not even going to address it. They're just going to be like, well, the, the black and white tickets sold out. Now you can just buy a general admissions ticket for $20 and we'll leave it at that. Oh, Peeny Weeny. Hey, it's me, Gator. Hi, Gator. <laughs> Did you bring your soundboard with you? Oh, yeah, I know. The Afro, the, the Afro Future Fest really isn't that big of a story. It's just stupid. It's fucking stupid that there'd be a Detroit music festival that thought they could be so up their own ass they could get away with that. It's Detroit. <laughs> Is there anything going on in that city aside from rape and murder? <laughs> you know, like, what's... Its neighborhoods are desolate. <clears throat> it makes Gary, Indiana look like a thriving fucking metropolis. I don't think you could really push people away like that, Detroit. I don't think you really thought it through very well. It's not even hot outside, apparently Chad is telling me. That's uh, very true. It's not even hot outside. I love, I love that sound clip. I don't, it's something about the way he says it. It's just really, it's amusing to me. I don't know, it's the tone of his voice or the way he, like, he staccatos it, he, like stutters it. It's just, I don't know how to explain it. It just makes me chuckle. Uh, Jim, you're forgetting that JF was paid by Epstein for a startup. Wait, was what? JF was paid by Jeffrey Epstein? How? How would Jeffrey Epstein even know who JF Gierpe is? <laughs> is there any evidence of that? Please tell me that JF didn't brag about Jeffrey Epstein paying him money. Now that Jeffrey Epstein is at the trial of a child, in the middle of a child trafficking case. People are saying that's true. Fuck off. <laughs> he admitted it? 
JF got a grant from a pedophile billionaire? <laughs> $20,000! Are you sure he wasn't joking around, chat? That sounds like something... That sounds like a joke. <laughs> it sounds like something he would joke about. JF said it was moral to take the money. He made an episode about it? Did he really? Let me see if I can find this. <laughs> How do you get money from Jeffrey Epstein? Uh, okay, let me see if I can find it. If anybody has it, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm looking for. Well, this is Right Wing Watch. I don't know if that's necessarily the most accurate source for a story on this. It says, White Nationalist YouTuber says Jeffrey Epstein once gave him $25,000. <laughs> I don't know if I want to use their take on this. Uh, this is from 2018. All right, let's see what it says. Looks like there's a link to a tweet. Let's see if we can just find the actual... Uh, no, that account's suspended, so I can't even see what that is. All right, this is a quote. Now, again, this is Right Wing Watch, so I, I, I don't know if you want to take it for truth or not, but this is what they say in the article. Jeff Epstein, who we're talking about here, was an original funder of my YouTube channel, Kierpy said. Now it's not that I give a shit about this guy. Okay, he got arrested after, and the fact that he donated to my channel at the very beginning of my YouTube career does not influence me. I'm not trying to find Jeffrey Epstein innocent and what he's been accused of. Uh, uh, Gearpy continues, I may never have talked about it, but Jeffrey Epstein has given me, has given $25,000 to my foundation in the U.S. when I started my YouTube career as a Jewish millionaire. I think he didn't expect my channel to turn out the way it did. Now, those are allegedly direct quotes. I don't, I've never heard of this. <laughs> He's saying Jeffrey Epstein paid him $25,000 to start his YouTube channel? Fucking what? What foundation? <laughs> what history am I missing here? Hey, listen, guys. Just full disclosure. You know that billionaire pedophile that's in the news right now for sex trafficking and sex cults? Yeah, he wrote me a check for $25,000 patted me on the shoulder and said, I got a good feeling about you. I got a good feeling about where this channel's going. Here's $25,000, kid. <laughs> you get out there and you red pill those kids about race. Holy shit. What, what foundation is he talking about? I... I wish there was more to this. What? Uh, okay, is this like some? Is this an educational thing? Is he talking about something different? What are we talking about? Uh, Andy has it on his channel in the series on JF. I don't want to watch his fucking series on it. Okay. All right. We. Okay. Somebody sent me a video clip. The twisted mind of JF Gear. I'm not watching that. I, I see people are linking me to the to the Andy Worski video, which is 40 minutes long. Okay, we got a time code? All right, let me take a look at the time code. What's Richard take on your Epstein donation? Uh, did you watch my yesterday show, Richard? I didn't, I'm sorry. Okay, because I announced that uh, I, 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 just for uh, transparency, because I was talking about a news item about Jeff Epstein, and I announced that oh, yes, God. Jeff Epstein has once contributed to the start of my YouTube channel with a $25,000 check. Holy shit! <laughs> Richard Spencer's face! His eyes grew like two times their normal size when Jeff said that. <laughs> Spencer got this look on his face like he, he felt like he fell off a tree or something and hit his head. He, okay, let me let me show you this look. Hey, Jim Richard, I just wanted to tell you that pedophile Jewish billionaire gave me some money. <laughs> all right, uh, all right, where is it here? Let me let me uh, let me see if I can just show you what his face looked like. It's amusing to me, so let me, let me show you. 
talking about a news item about Jeff Epstein and I announced that oh, yes, God. Jeff Epstein has once contributed to the start of my YouTube channel with a $25,000 check. And Do you see that? It's like he's processing it. It's just slowly hitting him. He's like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> what, missed, what did you say? Holy shit. I, I want to listen. I'll listen to the rest of it. I, I We don't need to see the video, I don't think. We'll, we'll, we'll hear what he, what he has to say. I, this sounds like a bizarre story, so I'm curious how JF met Jeffrey Epstein, I guess. That since then, my YouTube channel has kind of taken a different direction, and people were scandalized. They were like, JF is an agent of a Jewish millionaire rapist. <laughs> and as it, I He's that person... You were joking, I presume. No, no, I'm not joking. Th this is real. Uh, Jeff Epstein. Oh, his look again. All right, you know what? Yeah, the looks are great. I I'm still torn on this. I think JF might be fucking around. <laughs> I don't know. But we'll, we'll take a look at Richard's reaction. You're joking, right? No, I'm serious. <laughs> he gives him this look like, dude. All right, uh, I'll, I'll pull it up. We'll do full screen, Jeff. Uh, let's, let's take a look. Uh, here we go. A twenty-five thousand dollar check, and that since then my YouTube channel has kind of taken a different direction, and people were scandalized. They were like, "JF is an agent of a Jewish millionaire rapist." <laughs> and as it, I he's that person. You were joking, I presume. No, no, I'm not joking. Th this is real. Uh... <laughs> that fucking look is great. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Richard, welcome to the show. Jeff Epstein was a founder to uh, one of my nonprofits in the U.S. with a $25,000 check uh, in 2015, I believe. Wow. Um, <laughs> so Je this is the Jeffrey Epstein who has like a pedophile island or something and yeah, is yeah, it yeah. Clinton. Well, at backer? the time he was not he had not been found guilty, I believe of the You see that head shake? <laughs> Richard's having a real hard time computing this. Let's back that up just a little bit. 15, I believe. Wow. Um <laughs> so Je this is the Jeffrey Epstein who has like a pedophile island or something and yeah, is yeah, it yeah. Clinton well at backer? the time he was not he had not been found guilty I believe of this yet but there were there were <laughs> allegations coming out in the media but I didn't care I mean to me if, if you hate pedo pedophiles you should want to take the money out of their bank account and put it in other people's bank account so from a moral perspective I was totally fine with that oh I, I get no that argument but but if but the the implication of someone donating money is that you know the uh the you you pay the piper you get to call the tune and so uh but it, well not this was a conditionless donation because it was an mm -hmm. educational show that i had neuro tv and so to me to me hmm. it was no problem and i've talked to the media back then okay it was an educational show so i'm, I'm guessing the foundation he's talking about was related to something else it's just weird that the quote they pulled said that it was for the uh, the start of his YouTube channel, but it sounds like it was for something separate. I mean, in the article that they did on Epstein, they talked about how he was a known philanthropist, quote unquote, and would donate to a lot of people. Like he was sending out money to a shitload of organizations. So, I mean, I guess conceivably, <laughs> JF's was one of them. That is fucking weird. Maybe I've heard this before. I don't remember hearing about this. Chat, I'll be I'll be honest with you. I've never I guess uh, JF's the first person I know that got money from a pedophile billion billionaire. It's uh check that off the bucket list? I I don't know I don't know how to describe it aside from that. Holy shit. It's moral to take the money. Oh, it's unsealed. People are saying it's been unsealed. Let's go take a look. Let's go take a look at Mr. Epstein's wild ride. Right, just updated. Let's see if, uh, where is it here? Uh, okay, do you know where it's on? Ah, oh, Jesus, it's going to be one of those, isn't it? All right, let's see if we can find it. Uh, shit, shit, shit. Uh, if anybody in chat has, a, like, a link. Okay, documents, here we go. Jeffrey Epstein charged with two counts of trafficking. All right, this is live. 
Okay, so from nine. F okay, so this is just uh, just recently. A new indictment against Jeffrey Epstein, the white or the wealthy financier and erstwhile friend of luminaries including Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, Prince Andrew, and others, has just been unsealed in New York. Okay, let's see what it says. Epstein faces two counts of uh, sex trafficking uh, and sex trafficking conspiracy for alleged encounters between 2002 and 2005. Epstein is being prosecuted in the Southern District of New York. He avoided a prison sentence on similar charges. Don't care about that. Let's see. Uh, White House has not commented. Where is the actual... Uh, okay, if this person's covering it, maybe they've got more details. Uh, waiting in clerk's office for the indictment to get unsealed in a tense as last scene of The Sopranos. Okay. Right, but they're not... They haven't updated anything for 35 minutes. It just says two counts, but it's not going into any details aside from that. Okay. Uh, hold on, chat. Let me let me find it. Oh uh, yeah, people keep linking me to the Guardian. I mean, that's that's fine, but the newest update that I'm seeing, unless there, oh well, maybe there are more. Ah uh, no. Well, here, here's some of the talking heads talking about it. It's unusual and notable that the SDNY's public corruption unit is on the Epstein case. I keep thinking back to 2008 when I was in the SDNY, and public corruption was on a seemingly routine interstate prostitution case. Turned out then New York Governor Elliot Spitzer was client number nine. And then from somebody else, I've known Jeff for 15 years. Terrific guy. Oh, that's a quote from Donald Trump from 2002. They're going to throw that one at him every day. Okay, well, yeah, where the fuck is the exact details, though? God, they're taking their goddamn time with this. Well, let me see if I can find the newest news result. Uh, let's see. My days. Okay, here's one four minutes ago. Okay, th this looks like it was just updated. Let's see if we got new information here. Again, two charges of sex trafficking. and conspiracy to commit sex trafficking, he's expected, uh, and he expected more superseding indictments would be added. Uh, Boy said both the public corruption unit and the sex trafficking unit in New York are working on the investigation. Uh, this is an important first step. Hopefully prosecutors will focus on some of uh, his co-conspirators going forward. Where's this coming from? Who's, who's saying this? Okay, that's just one of the talking heads. Uh, one, of, uh, one law enforcement official told the Associated Press the case deals with allegations that Epstein paid underage girls for massages and molested them at his homes in Florida and New York. Epstein was once counted a pay for Still waiting for more details. All right, so as it stands, at least for the information that's out there, he's got sex trafficking and conspiracy to commit sex trafficking charges hanging over his head. Up to 45 years in prison, particular, particular one. But here's what I'm confused about: if it's saying that the two charges against him right now are just for sex trafficking,
alles in Ordnung, Arnwald? Sagen wir mal so. Ich lebe noch. Oh, du hast also auch hergefunden. Wir wurden wieder und wieder attackiert und hatten Mühe, uns durchzukämpfen. Wie lief es bei dir? Nicht viel angenehmer also. Das waren wohl die armen Seelen, die Theoderik verfluchen ließ. Was für ein grausames Los. Wie auch immer. Die Mühen scheinen sich gelohnt zu haben. Und wie? Mit so einem riesigen Schatz habe ich nicht gerechnet. <lacht> Lisa und die anderen werden Augen machen. Genau das, was Alamigo gebraucht hat.
Also beruhigt euch doch. Beruhigen? Erst wenn die verdammte Hexe tot ist. Hol sie da raus, dann machen wir kurzen Prozess mit ihr. Genau, Tod der Verräterin. Was ist denn hier los? Irgendjemand hat herausgefunden, dass Fordola hier gefangen gehalten wird. Und jetzt wollen die Leute mit ihr abrechnen. Endlich gibst du es zu. Die Henkerin von Galemald ist also wirklich hier. Worauf wartet ihr dann noch? Dieser Mörderin gehören die Gliedmaßen einzeln ausgerissen. Überlasst sie nur uns! Wie grausam. Dann wären wir nicht besser als die Galea. Kommt zur Vernunft! Ah, ihr Tod ist das einzig Vernünftige! Die Wolfschädel haben meinen Verlobten massakriert! Und meinen Vater auch! Sie hat uns den galäischen Hunden zum Fraß vorgeworfen. Und eure Kameraden ebenso. Warum schützt ihr sie? Bei Ralga. Ich dachte, den Krieg hätten wir hinter uns. Hört her, meine Brüder und Schwestern. Wer ist das? Rauban, der Bulle von Alamigo. Euer Zorn, euer Leid, euer Kummer, all das brennt auch in mir. Das Stechen und die Schmerzen, ich kann sie nicht leugnen. Doch denkt nicht zuerst an euch. Denkt an all jene, die von den Besatzern verschleppt wurden und noch immer verschollen sind. Denkt an die Familien und Freunde, die auf ihre Rückkehr warten. Es ist unsere Pflicht, die Vermissten zu suchen und zurückzubringen. Ich kann verstehen, dass ihr auf Rache und Gerechtigkeit sind. Doch noch ist es zu früh, Urteile zu vollstrecken. Jemanden umzubringen ist leicht. Doch Tote lassen sich schlecht verhören. Wir sind im Begriff, einen neuen Grundstein für unsere Nation zu legen. Deshalb brauchen wir Antworten. Unsere Herzen müssen frei von Zweifeln sein. Sonst steht unser Land auf brüchigem Boden. Was mit den Verbrechern geschieht, soll unsere neue Führung entscheiden. Daher bitte ich euch, habt noch etwas Geduld. Gebt eurer Wut nicht nach. Ach, verflucht, wenn das so einfach wäre.
die strahlenden Helden. Seid ihr gekommen, um euch an meinem Elend zu ergötzen? Oder seid ihr endlich so gnädig, meinem sinnlosen Dasein ein Ende zu machen? Weder noch. Du wirst leben. Wir haben nicht vor, ein Exempel an dir zu statuieren. Warum tut ihr mir das an? Mein Leben hat keinen Sinn mehr. Was soll ich noch auf dieser Welt? Ich habe meine Kameraden geopfert und es hat trotzdem nicht zum Sieg gereicht. Das wird mich mein Leben lang verfolgen. Lieber sterbe ich. <lacht> mir machst du nichts vor. Du wolltest nie sterben. Du wolltest frei sein. Dafür hast du gekämpft, mit grausamen Mitteln. Dafür hast du deine Freunde geopfert. Und glaub mir, ich weiß ganz genau, wovon ich spreche. Fordula, trödle nicht rum, wir verspäten uns noch. Willst du Legatus Gaius etwa warten lassen? Bin schon unterwegs. Wer ist dieser Regalfuß Gaius eigentlich, Papa? Sag schon. Regalfuß Gaius? Lass das bloß nicht seine Leibwächter hören. Legatus Gaius ist ein edler und äußerst einflussreicher Mann. Er herrscht über ganz Alamigo. Es ist eine große Ehre, an seinem Bankett teilnehmen zu dürfen. Tch, Verräter! Rita? Hast du ein Geheimnis verraten, Papa? Schön wär's, Kleine. Deine Eltern haben ihr Land verraten und ihre migischen Brüder und Schwestern gleich mit, damit sie sich ein Stück vom dreckigen galeischen Kuchen abschneiden können. Ersticken sollen sie daran, diese gierigen Hunde. Wie gemein! Meine Eltern sind die Liebsten auf der ganzen Welt! Zu dir vielleicht, aber uns treten sie mit Füßen, verhätschelte Göre. Hordola! Verräter! So helft doch! Haltet diesen Abschaum auf! Die Armee des Kaisers hat keine Zeit für die nichtigen Streitigkeiten des Pöbels. Ihr migischen Köter könnt euch gern gegenseitig zerfleischen. Aber wir sind Bürger! Wir haben Rechte! Oh! Papa! Wieso machen die das? Keine Sorge, mein Kind. Eines Tages werden auch Sie verstehen, dass unser Weg der richtige ist.
Lasst sie. Sie sollen sich ruhig ein bisschen austoben. Dann machen sie uns weniger Ärger. Fordula, ich flehe dich an. Geh nicht! Du besitzt das galeische Bürgerrecht bereits. Es gibt keinen Grund, der Armee beizutreten. Was ist das für eine Tätowierung? Das weißt du genau. Das traditionelle migische Muster, das Vater auch trug. Willst du etwa, dass man dich als Wilde beschimpft? Davor brauche ich mich als Bürgerin doch nicht zu fürchten. Oder etwa doch, Mutter? Da hast du es. So viel ist das Bürgerrecht eines Megiten wert. Die Galea werden immer auf uns herabblicken. Wollen wir doch mal sehen, ob sich die Leute noch trauen, mich schief anzugucken, wenn ich erst mal Pilus Prior bin. Wie Vater will ich jedenfalls nicht enden. Hansfried, Rudolf, Emmeline, seid ihr bereit? Es wird hart, keine Frage. Sie werden versuchen, uns fertig zu machen, uns zum Aufgeben zu zwingen. Aber das schaffen sie nicht. Wir werden bluten für sie. Sterben, wenn es sein muss. Wir werden alles tun, um frei zu sein. Du willst dich opfern, nicht wahr? Du lässt alle Schuld auf dich, wirst zum Tode verurteilt und erlaubst deinen Landsleuten so einen Neuanfang. Du irrst dich. Wenn du einfach nur sterben wolltest, hättest du es längst tun können. Ein Strick ist schnell geknüpft. Halt's Maul. Wie soll ich schweigen nach allem, was ich gesehen habe? Verstehe. Ihr habt in meiner Vergangenheit rumgeschnüffelt, was? Was auch immer ihr gesehen habt, glaubt nicht, mich zu kennen. Ich bin nicht die, für die ihr mich haltet. Alles, was ich wollte, war Rache für den Tod meines Vaters. Rache an denen, die ihm feige das Leben nahmen und denen, die ihn elend verrecken ließen. Dafür habe ich mir sogar diese dämliche Kraft verleihen lassen. Kannst du mit dieser Gabe den Verstand behalten? Du blickst in die Herzen wildfremder Leute. Du siehst, wie das Leben sie umherschubst, wie sie leiden und verraten werden. Wie erträgst du das? Ich hasse euch alle! Wir wollen die Dinge nicht überstürzen. Überleg dir in Ruhe, was du wirklich willst. Wir geben dir etwas Bedenkzeit.
gehen wir.
trafficking. But it's also alleging in the stories that are they're covering that um, he molested children. Shouldn't he be charged with that as well? Like, why is it just these two charges? That I guess that's what I'm confused about. There should be more. Okay. Indictment. Jeffrey Epstein worked and conspired with others, including employees and associates. <laughs> They're going to go for it, aren't they? This isn't going to just be Jeffrey Epstein. They're legit going to go for it. They want to take other people down. That's why the corruption units involved. This reaches into government. Somebody somewhere during this investigation found out powerful people <clears throat> facilitated and were associated with the sex trafficking of children and the molestation of children. And they're going to use Epstein as a wedge, as leverage to go after them. This is going to get fucking interesting. This is going to get real fucking interesting. A whole lot of gym accidents coming in? While there might be barbells falling from the sky, I'll be honest with you, chat. I, I don't see this guy surviving long. I... Listen, what do you think is going to happen to this putz? Do you think he's really going to... His only chance at getting out of this without 40 years in prison or a barbell falling on his head is to start talking now. He has to know that. He has to know that. There's no way he doesn't know that. The question is, is he stupid enough to try to ride it out or is he going to roll over and give them what they want? How long is he going to play cat and mouse with federal prosecutors? I don't know. This is going to be a wild ride, though. <laughs> God, I wonder if if uh, Gierpe got a $25,000 donation. How many hats has Mr. Epstein bought? Mr. Epstein, how many of my hats did you buy? <laughs> if you bought any, please burn them. Jesus. His private jet will crash? That's a potential. There's always a potential for an accidental air crash to happen for poor Mr. Epstein. Uh, what did that say? Uh, give who what they want, though. Uh, well, Domina, uh, this is what I think is happening. I think investigators <clears throat> were included in this case. I think they looked into it and they saw that there were probably some interesting names attached to it. And I think they see that Epstein is at the center of it. And I think that federal prosecutors and the government or at least as part of the government uh, will go leniently on him uh, not this t you know not like the last time where it was a slap on the wrist just because he was wealthy and connected I think they'll go leniently on him this time if he gives them names of corrupt officials uh, people within the financial sector people within Hollywood I, it's just it's the fact that corruption units involved that I find so interesting I mean maybe it's something on a smaller scale sure maybe Maybe some local police chief that was involved in the first investigation uh, fucked some kid. I don't know. Maybe Epstein was the one that supplied that kid, and that's why the corruption unit's involved. But it, it's just, there's some, there's more to this. Now that they're saying associates and employees were involved, that means that more people, the more people that are involved outside of just Epstein means more people having a potential to talk. More people having a potential not just to talk about Epstein himself, but about people that he associates with. I, again, Virginia Roberts named Prince fucking Andrew. 